Stephen Isselis, welcome back to Glasgow. Thank you so much for A, coming to play the Schumann Cello Concerto, which is wonderful. And thank you so much for doing this interview today, because I know you've had a very busy day today. Um, so the, the, uh, what I didn't realize when I was reading about the Schumann Concerto is that it wasn't actually performed in Schumann's lifetime. No, not at all. I can't remember if it was 1860 or 1867. Somebody just asked me about that. Um, but yes, it, not till a long time after he died. No, but he was, it was possibly the last work he revised before he was taken to the asylum, where he spent his last two and a half years. Um, so he was when he had this terrible week where he couldn't sleep, and when he did sleep, he had terrible nightmares or very beautiful dreams, but he was in a bad state. But one, one of those nights when he couldn't sleep, he got up in the middle of the night and revised the proofs for the cello concerto. Mm, uh, yeah. It's sort of significant in his biography. Although, but it was written at a very happy time when he first got to Dusseldorf. It was his first really big job. Um, and he was very happy to be there. It all went very well at first. It ended in disaster. But at that point, when he wrote the cello concerto and the Rhenish Symphony, 1850, it was, it was a good time. Yeah, and and what I was um, is that so was it not performed in his lifetime because it just wasn't that popular, or he couldn't find somebody to play it for him, or uh... well, it couldn't be popular because yeah, he couldn't, he didn't know a really top cellist. Right, he knew um, one idiot who he has a long correspondence with, which is quite funny, um, who keeps making excuses for not playing the concerto, like he has a life-threatening illness, and the next time he's fine, but his ch children have knocked over his cello and broken it, and, and he doesn't like the last movement, and he thinks the first movement must be very slow. He's obviously just a lousy cellist. Um, and then there's Christian Reimers, who's a very interesting character, um, who was the first cellist in Schumann's orchestra, but I don't think he was on a level that he could actually play the concerto. There's, there's no breaks between the movements either. And I read one quote that said that, that um, I, mean, I don't know whether this is true or not, but that the, the, the piece is written as three movements, but they all join into each other. And apparently Schumann couldn't stand applause between movements. So yeah, I've heard that too, I'm not sure. But it's true, you know, it's, in those days it was quite normal, I think, to encore a movement. <laughs> um, I mean, it's, now the way it is, you can't imagine it with breaks between movements because it is one. And, you know, he brings back material from the first moment, even in the last moment, and there's a little link between the first and second, which is gorgeous, which is a quote from other pieces, and then between the second and third, there's a beautiful bridge passage where again he quotes from the first moment. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's all of one. He originally called it concert stuk, concert mm -hmm. piece rather than concerto. I mean, it's wonderful, and he also wrote, of course, the pieces in folk style in 1849, I guess just a year before, and. Um, but he then wrote, again, the last big piece before he was taken to the asylum was five romances for cello and piano, which unfortunately were destroyed by his widow 40 years later, for which we do not forgive her. Yeah. So, um, because you've had such an extraordinary career, um, I mean, it's amazing what you do when reading about you. I was, you know, obviously I've, I've played for you many times, um, but you do so much chamber music, you teach, you, you're the artistic director of Prussia Cove. Um, so um, do you, is that the varied life that you love, just doing, just exploring music? Because um, yeah. you do, you've had a fantastic relationship with John Taverner. Um, so you just, and you do period instrument work. Is that, is this just music to you and it's just, um, just one great long journey? Exactly, and writing as well. So I do a lot of writing. I've just written my fourth book and, um, yeah, I just love to communicate about music, communicate mm. music or about music. Um, it gives me huge pleasure. And mm. Yeah, I mean, if I was a pianist, I probably wouldn't do quite so many different styles. And I, I don't know if I play forte piano and modern piano, whatever. Pianists, mm. you really have to specialize to a certain extent because there's such a huge repertoire, but cello there isn't. So yeah. I, don't, I don't want to specialize. I want to play everything from Bach mm. onwards. And I love working with living composers like Thomas Addis. I work with Kurtag. I work with a lot. And, mm. um, John Tavner, I did work with, of course. Um, yeah, and I love to do that. So um, I, I, I know Prussia Cove is, is a massive part of your life and, you know, you're very passionate about it. So um, it would be remiss of me if I didn't ask you about it. So presumably the courses didn't happen this year because of the, of the pandemic. So no, are you... one week. Right, oh, okay. Chamber music, yeah. We got one week of chain music, which we were 
at uh, one point it didn't look as if we could and then the ruling came and it, we decided we discovered it was just legal I and mean, it was of course full of doubt until the till we got even after we got down there i remember going the first night i got there it's this thing saying this sheet saying do this do this we have to do that we have to do that if anybody tests positive of course we will close down the seminar and go home or isolate or whatever <laughs> it was a bit scary but each day got more relaxed because we weren't seeing anybody from outside yeah so sure. we, knew we were safe and it was wonderful it was an oasis mm. i love the place but also i love the ideals with, for which it was founded you know, the musical ideals and and i just love being there now my son it's been a huge part of his life too because oh, wow. it's a beautiful place as well isn't it? it's on the atlantic coast in cornwall and you know yeah magical You've been doing some directing from the cello. A little bit, yeah. So I'm very, very limited. Most times I say no, because I, it scares me, because I can't conduct at all, um, but I can direct. But I, you know, it has to be just the right orchestra. Don't mind my stopping them every four, uh, four bars. And, and, you know, it would drive, because there was an American chamber orchestra wanting me to direct. And so I just don't think it's a good idea. I think they'll hate me after one rehearsal. So, um, <laughs> It, it, very few cares, a few German orchestras, like Gary, oh, and Swiss. Luzern mm. Symphony, I've directed a few times, and the Potsdam Kammerphilharmonie in Deutsche Kammerphilharmonie in concertos, I've directed. We recorded Haydn concerto with my directing. Orchestras I know very well, I can just mm. about there, and then I say to them, I don't mind at all if you don't want me to direct again. But I do <laughs> see directing again, to my surprise. Mm. So when, when, when you're playing, when you're directing, when you're, when you're, when, even when you're writing, do you, do you miss that interaction when you're playing a concerto? Because when you're playing a concerto, you've got, you know, a, a, an orchestra behind you, you've got a conductor, and, and you're playing your part. But when you're playing chamber music, it's so, is it more interactive playing chamber music, or do you not see it that way? It's all the same thing, except that in the concert, I'm looking the other way with the orchestra. But I'm listening just as hard. And it's absolutely, it's chamber music on a large scale. I always say that about concertos. There shouldn't be a difference. I've just been actually helping, I'm doing, you know, bones and fingerings for the Henley edition of the Dvorak concerto. And I've insisted on writing an annoying introduction, which I say to the players, listen, it's chamber music, a company, as well as, you know, it's not, it's not just a concerto, it's a symphony, it's, ch it's chamber music, it's everything. And I just point out places where the cello is accompanying them. So many places where an equal duet so just got to keep listening so I, um we've nearly finished and i just couldn't let you go without asking about two things one is you tweet a lot and i follow you i, I must see one of your tweets nearly every day you're traveling with your cello is a that is that is really hard isn't it <laughs> well maybe i, mean, a little, maybe I slightly dramatize it on twitter because <laughs> people <laughs> enjoy it and when i'm annoyed with check-in it's quite cathartic to <laughs> to complain about right. it on Twitter, and I get a lot of sympathy, um, maybe more than I deserve. But yes, I spend much too long on Twitter. It's pathetic. Very wrong. Well, that's good. And I have to say, because I'm a massive Marx Brothers fan, I couldn't let right. you go. I say, oh, I love Marx Brothers. My children, they were they were brought up on the Marx Brothers. Uh, I just love it. So, where did your love of the Marx Brothers I, come? I got to say, show you my mask then. Oh, okay. <laughs> Brilliant. Made by Ron Arad, the designer, Brilliant. architect. Uh, yes. Um, I, I don't know, I must have been in my teens. I went to see a Marx Brothers film with my sisters and we all fell in love. And in fact, Harpo, who is my complete hero and whom, about whom I did a radio program for the BBC, um, his son has become one of my great friends and I call him every couple of weeks just to check he's okay, he's 84. Um, he's one of the loveliest men in the world. Stephen, thank you so much. Thank you it's so much for tonight. It's been such a pleasure to see you again. And I hope you have a great week in Glasgow and a slightly more comfortable journey home. Uh, as long as it's not too hot and without a screaming a kid right next to me. Yes, that would be a pleasure. <laughs> Lovely to see you. <laughs> thank you so much. That's a yeah. real pleasure. Thank you. Bye-bye.